Sorry to call an emergency meeting on a Friday, but I absolutely had to. I just got the prototype in for Robot Quest Arena, and I, I have to tell you about it. I have to tell you about it because at recording this, there's only five days left on the campaign. If I wait to the weekend, it's Easter. I've got family stuff. I can't be recording, so I've got to do it right this second. And the reason I have to tell you is because I really enjoyed my time. And just for context, I've already made a full video, all visuals, all of that stuff that I typically do for Robot Quest Arena. If you want to know more about the base game, check it out. It's in the description. I go super deep into all of that and why I love this system. However, the reason for this meeting is I played it again yesterday and... To be honest with you, I hadn't played it in quite a while. Ever since starting this channel, I play lots of games and I try to get new stuff to the table all the time, so I don't really get to go back to the old favorites. And yesterday in doing so, totally outside of what's even in the campaign, I just realized once again why I love this game. First of all, my 12 year old was super into it. So anytime I get my kids to the table and they are actually excited about games, plus. Secondly, I absolutely had a blast in playing this thing. I love deck building and this one just really allows you to kind of, you know, play a bunch of crazy cards and just have a good time. The rules overhead is small. In general, the game just plays really smoothly and quickly. If somebody gets knocked out, it's not a big deal. You're just giving up points to the other one. All the things that I already talked about in the initial review were still super apparent. And I think that says a lot about a game when you can come back to it after a while and really have the same exact experience. And, and for me, even another aha moment, like oh, I've got to get this to the table more. It's just fun. It's fun for me, but also for my son. So that's the premise of the first video. Now, new content wise, I was skeptical as to, to how much it would actually add to the experience because a lot of the core alternate mechanics had already been taken care of in previous expansion bot. If you don't know what I'm talking about, when you buy an expansion bot, you get expansion cards that go into the shop market that many of which create a new mechanic to the game which all of them I absolutely love. And I think when you're buying base game, the original base expansion bots are frankly a must. They make the game so much better. They also give you extra terrain tiles. I don't know if that's what they're actually called, but they're terrain tiles that go out onto the board and they all have different effects. And those are incredibly important as well because it's easy without those and without super unique cards just to like, you know, drive up to another bot and we just beat each other up until till one dies. In the instance of some of these extra kind of movement cards and also some of these terrain tiles that do all kinds of really cool things, it creates a movement dimension to the game that throws you all around the board where you're constantly thinking about where you're positioning yourself and what the other player has to play against you. So now coming back to what has been expanded, first there's four new bots that I was able to play with. And in general, oddly enough, the bots are my least favorite part about the game. There's nothing wrong with them. They just have kind of a, a light asymmetry to them and, and gives each player a different flavor whenever they play the game. Some of them I think are more overpowered than others, but I just may be salty as my 12 year old is beating me and I'm just calling whatever bot they're, <laughs> they're playing as overpowered. But I actually had fun with the mechanic on these bots. I played Nozzle last night and I played Nozzle last night. And the gimmick there is if I can keep two batteries in my hand, I can draw an, an extra card the next turn. So instead of having five cards in hand, I have six cards in hand. And, and once you bought an advanced battery or two and you are able to draw the six, you can have a lot of batteries to buy some of those upper echelon high level cards when you do so. So I actually found that ability to be a, a, a strategic wrinkle that I was thinking about throughout the entire game. So, you know, hats off to Nozzle, absolutely loved him. My, my son played Bubble, and this is where I thought was a, a little bit broken. At the start of each turn, you can repair one, and if you're full health, you actually get to take a red cube or a point, essentially. And that triggered every single time for him. It wasn't even anything to think about. Strategically, I guess it has some 
calculus into your decision and what you might decide to do, but it's just this constant ongoing benefit that he benefited a lot from. I think he beat me by like 10 or 12 points last night with Bubble. But regardless, Bubble is overpowered and really great bot to uh, to give to a, a brand new player. Uh, another one that is pretty huge, especially in games that you have like three or four players, tack at the start of your turn, deal a damage to each robot one range away. I mean, that is that's huge in heavy player counts. That can get some some work in, especially if you have kind of a cluster fight. And then Blaze, uh, your first move each turn is free. We hadn't played with Blaze, but we were playing with a terrain tile that boosted movement that I don't know if I'm allowed to, to talk about, but either way, movement is huge. So having that ability is another kind of basic ability, right? You get an extra move and you don't have to spend a battery for it. It adds to your ability to, to strategically position yourself to especially to manipulate other bots and push them into hazards and and all kinds of crazy stuff that this game actually presents to you. So that's the new bots. But with every new bot, you get new shop cards. And for me, I don't know, it's kind of a toss up. Do I like the I, I guess it's the shop cards are the number one kind of driver of this game for me. And there's so many fun cards that come out in base game plus expansion robots that I didn't know if the the extra and new cards would be exciting. And many of which I actually can't talk about their their surprises from what i hear and you know some of them have already been revealed on the campaign but there's a huge stack of cards that i got to play with and i'm going to tell you right now there's some really fun stuff and today as i'm going through the campaign there were some cards that i really really wanted to share but they just they hadn't been revealed yet so i don't want to play spoiler there i've been asked not to just know that there's some incredibly fun cards that are being added that do some really new and different things that, oh, how do I say this? That change the way in which we scored points in some cases and, and moved around the map. There's just so much good stuff. And each bot really has a, a theme in the cards that they are essentially bringing in their expansion pack. So for Blaze, obviously that special ability had to do with movement and so do the shop cards that they come with. There's a couple that are shown on the campaign. However, I will say that I, I don't know for a fact that they come in the Blaze pack because I'm, I'm just going through a, a big stack of cards, but there were some movement-based cards that were absolutely awesome and didn't just deal with movement. So it's kind of compounded and extra actions that are combined with movement that I thought were so much fun. Bubbles cards deal with scrapping. Any sort of deck thinning in a deck builder, I am all in for. So it's it's one of those things. It's like, do I need all these robots? Well, I do. I do like to thin my deck. So I guess, yeah, I got, I got to go with Bubble, even though Bubble is overpowered. And my 12 year old used it to unfairly smash me yesterday. <clears throat> And Nozzle's cards were all about manipulating the shop, getting extra cards, discounts, which I thought was really fun. I had no idea that they went with Nozzle. Once again, they were just in the stack and they started showing up and I started grabbing those. And I think that's actually probably <laughs> why I lost because I was grabbing those late in game that basically propel your deck further once you can draw them back up again. And, you know, I, you know, I was already getting smashed, so that that wasn't that fun. But I love the idea of getting cards that help propel you to get those really expensive high level cards that are going to kind of break the game for you. And then tax cards. I don't know that I came across many of these in my playthroughs. So tack introduces an exciting new ability. Players may spend energy to activate secondary effects on their cards double the power but that is good right like that adds complexity to the game it's not just buying a card that gives you damage and range or it's melee plus damage it's giving you an extra ability as you play them i'm guessing they're probably all pretty expensive but you know synergizing with what nozzle is doing and giving you those cards to boost your buying power that could definitely be huge the other thing that I found really fun that in my first review, I probably didn't give enough weight are these terrain tiles and how much they change the game. And once again, I don't see a lot of them exposed that I've been playing with. Let me check real quick. Okay, I see spiked wall. We played with spiked wall. Whenever you get knocked into this, 
take one damage. Spiked wall is an obstacle that blocks movement and line of sight. That's always cool. That adds to extra dimension and maneuverability on the map. That thing was super fun. And I see some of them pictured that I use, but I don't see explanations on them. So I don't want to ruin them for you. Just know that they're dealing with extra movement, maybe even manipulating another bot to move. And, you know, you could always move them into hazards. And I think the the terrain system in general is an absolute must and is freaking awesome. And adding all of these different extra tiles just adds to kind of the infinite replayability of this game and it looks like in the stretch goals there there's a there's a decent amount so you know i would be really excited about what's coming in terms of the terrain tiles a couple other notes the a couple other notes i had mentioned kind of like shifting dynamics in each bot expansion the original expansion bots do a lot so if you're new to this game or maybe you just have the base, do not sleep on those whatsoever. In fact, let me find them. So Jaws adds the upgrade system. I can vouch for that. Absolutely love that. Kettle adds these defense cards that are essentially like e equipable equipment. Absolutely love those. I didn't get Dozer because I didn't back this originally on Kickstarter. It's back again and it gives an event system. I can't speak to it, but just looking at the two cards that they're showing there I, I i have to have the event system as well so uh there there is a, a a lot here a couple other notes on the campaign there's a storage box i'm a sucker for a storage box it does increase price pretty considerably there's a bigger board that if you play with five plus people is probably a must to have as well you know and that goes down to kind of like i want to be realistic here and it's not cheap and in fact in the faq they addressed that production in the first run was much more expensive than they had anticipated, and that's reflective in the difference in price now. So I will say, if you're new to this game, you have two options. You can go right into kind of base game. I would highly recommend the base expansion bots because they add a lot and totally new mechanics to the shop. However, a lot of that is available on retail right this second, and you can go and and get it for a pretty decent price. I will say, and I want to note, that it is always better for a small publisher in particular to be supported on the campaign. They are selling it at full retail and actually making it a decent money on it. I'm looking at the prices of these things that are sitting on, you know, Tabletop Merchant or Game Nerds or whatever it might be. They're probably not making a ton of money on it, but, you know, I get it. You just times are tough. So, you know, you do you, but just know that it's it is better to support on the campaign. But you could get it right now and it's a really fun game and if I didn't have it, I would probably be buying it on my favorite online retailer I'm right this second. Now, if you're returning to this, I think you don't have a choice. <laughs> I think you got to go all bots storage box. It's it is expensive, but if you love the game, I think it is adding a lot. While it's not adding new mechanics per se, like some of the other expansion bots are, it is adding some added complexity and strategy and maneuverability and just a lot of kind of fun mechanics. And then on top of that, to get the terrain tiles that completely change each game, you know, it's, it's honestly a pretty good value if you're gonna get it to the table. You know, there's always there's always that caveat. And that's the agenda for the emergency meeting. The old stuff is awesome. If you haven't played Robot Quest Arena, my number one message is it's wonderful. It's available right now. And especially if you have kids that you struggle to get to the table and maybe you want to introduce them to some deck building mechanics. This is a great game and you're not going to be bored. I, I promise you that. And if you're also new, the expansion bots add a ton to the game. To me, they are critical. Second is it's expensive. And me personally, I'll be honest with you, I'm not going to back it right this second. I'm going to I'm go into the pledge manager and allow my, my budget to kind of rebuild. That's a personal thing. I'm allocating most of my funds to games I can go get right now and get on the channel. So it's tougher for me to go and, and back absolutely everything. Do I have some FOMO here? Yes, because I was already missing the bot dozer that gives you the events. I could never get it. It was a Kickstarter exclusive, and it's now a GameFound exclusive along with TAC that gives kind of the 
the new card dynamic where you spend extra energy to do extra bonus stuff. So it makes the deck building experience a little more complex. I'm going to have a hard time not backing that because I need those. The box is the other thing. I am, I am a sucker for a box. It is definitely not necessary, but I really love a storage solution. They're also working on some new art for the box and some of those mock-ups look absolutely unbelievable. I can't say I won't back this. I'm just saying right this second, all transparency, I'm not backing it. And that is a personal decision. It depends on what your budget is. But, you know, original message is it's available right this second in retail in a package that we have a ton of fun with outside of all of the new stuff. And if you're thinking about it and you're unsure, it makes a ton of sense to go get it at retail right now. And there will be a, a late pledge period that you can kind of come back and check out those new bots. I'm not one to play on the FOMO thing. In fact, I don't do a lot of coverage on Kickstarters in particular. I much prefer games that have already come out and proven themselves and I can give a full assessment. I can say with this game that I've played it. All mechanics are wonderful. It's in general a really great game. That's why I decided to go beg wise wizard to have this afforded to me before the end of the campaign. And, and thank you for that. I really appreciate that opportunity. With that said, if you've made it this far, I really appreciate it. Maybe think about liking and subscribing. I don't do a ton of Kickstarter content, but I do a lot of other stuff. Anyways, if you've made it this far, I really appreciate it. Thanks for being here and have a great weekend. Meeting dismissed.